Hi everyone, I'm Nurse Allison, and today we'll be breaking down cardiovascular pharmacology NCLEX style practice questions to show you not only how to answer these specific questions, but also walk you behind the reasoning through the answers. We're going to be using the Simple Nursing Question Bank in order to do this. What I love about Simple Nursing is that these questions, the question banks, are written by current and former question writers to give you a realistic view of what exactly to expect on the exam. And you can also track your progress and identify your weak areas by looking at your performances on the insight component under the quiz bank. So first things first, let's pick a topic. Under create practice tests for today, I'm going to keep tutor mode on. Lots of people call that study mode also. So that's going to tell me if I get it right or wrong immediately after. I like to use that, especially if I'm trying to study specific areas for quiz or exam. So that way, immediately after the question, I can see what's the rationale to the answer I selected to alternative answers and whatnot. For quiz mode, I'm going to select all questions. If I were to select unused, that would be questions I've never seen before. So that can also help me see engagement my performance on new questions, brand new to me. Sometimes I like to go and review just on questions I've missed before, especially if say I've already had quizzes over certain areas or exams and maybe it's a comprehensive final and I want to go back and see have I improved on those areas, then redoing some questions I've gotten incorrect tell me if I'm getting better or not and if I'm truly improving on those weak areas as I've been trying to do. So now I'm going to select pharmacology and for today I'm going to select cardiovascular. And now you can see there's all these different options. So let's say I have a very specific quiz tomorrow. It's so nice that for these, you can actually personalize it to the topics that you want to focus on. So let's say my instructors told me that I'm going to have questions on cholesterol lowering agents, nitro. Let's just do those two. So done. Now I'm going to select five questions. And now I'm going to start exam. Which client report is most concerning to the nurse in a client who has been taking resuvastatin for six weeks? So one thing that we know is I know that for resuvastatin, our statin says it lower the cholesterol. We want our happy eyes, our HDLs to get higher. And we want our lousy lows, our LDLs to get lower. So happy highs, we want them higher. Lousy lows, we want them lower. So if it says most concerning, we're looking something for something that's bad. So decreasing LDL is a lousy lows and increasing. That is not most concerning. That's actually what we want to see. So then it says nausea and drowsiness. Well, they should be taking the resuvastatin at night. I remember statins you're supposed to take at night. So drowsiness actually isn't terrible. Headaches and muscle pain versus insomnia and abdominal cramping. One thing that's important to know is especially muscle aches and pain in statins is something we absolutely want to watch for and watch those creatinine kinase levels because of risk for rhabdomyolysis. So especially that's one major side effect that we got to watch for. That and liver dysfunction are huge, huge issues. And so, again, that walks through the incorrect rationales and why those aren't the answer. And that's why we take some things at night is because they do cause drowsiness. And again, oftentimes, especially if it's saying would be most concerning, they want to say, do you know what's the desired effect as well? So usually the desired effect is one of those answers that you can easily eliminate if it says would be most concerning. On the next one, it states, which is the priority information for the nurse to obtain for a client presenting the emergency department with substernal chest pain of 8 out of 10, diaphoresis, and room air oxygen of 90%. Okay, so substernal chest pain, sweating, and low oxygen. So there's a thorough medication history, health insurance coverage information that is rarely going to be our priority, social history including alcohol use, and use of supplemental oxygen at home. So my client is in right now, especially substantial chest pain, diaphoresis, I'm worried about a heart attack. And so because if they use supplemental oxygen at home, that doesn't help me right here right now. And I would probably want as quick of a thorough medication history as possible, especially things like, are they taking nitro at home? And when was the last time they took it? So some of the things we do in a triage is find out what were their most recent medications? When did they most recently take them? Because we want to make sure that we don't give anything that could further exacerbate that. Or maybe the problem is they haven't taken their meds. And so when we don't want to give them anything also, they'd have an adverse reaction to. And so again, I love that this is going to give us the hints and rationales built right in. So even if we it wrong, we saw the reasoning behind the correct answer, and it's going to help lead us in the right direction if we were to get a question like that in the future. The next one, the nurse is caring for a client admitted to the hospital for chest pain. Nitroglycerin sublingual is given one time 
without relief. The blood pressure drops from 142 over 94 to 120 over 72. Which action should the nurse perform next? Nitroglycerin sublingually, we can give it three times, five minutes apart. So for this, I would want to give another dose, especially since we're not too low. And that's correct. So we can take it up to three times every five minutes. We want the systolic to stay above 100. So we want it to drop low, just don't want to go too low, don't want to overcrack the problem too much. And if so, then we can do a fluid bolus. And again, it gives us those rationales. It tells us, for example, the last one, lay the client supine. We wouldn't do that because their blood pressure is high enough. One of the main reasons we'd lay them flat or even head the bed down would be if we're worried about perfusion to the brain. And we aren't worried about that here yet. For the next question, which common side effect does the nurse caution the client about when starting a new bile acid sequestrant for hypercholesterolemia? So common side effect does the nurse caution the client about, especially if it's for too much cholesterol. So there's bleeding, diarrhea, leg pain, and facial flushing. All right, remember, I don't know everything, but I know something. And so trying to think, okay, common side effect, if it's common, caution them about. So that might mean that we're going to tell them about it so that way they don't suddenly stop taking the med or suddenly don't worry. And we know leg pain, especially with something that's for anti-cholesterol, that would actually be a concern. Bleeding would probably be a concern. I'm going to say diarrhea because lots of times what can happen is that they can start to excrete those fatty acids and those bile acids through the feces. And that's correct. And again, so even if let's say there's two that you're back and forth, back and forth about, but here specifically the wording says common side effect, caution the client about, meaning give them the heads up because especially we don't want them to suddenly stop taking the med for this. We just want them to be aware of it. So giving them that advice, it doesn't mean that we're worried as far as you need to tell the nurse, you need to report this to the doctor. And for the last one in the sequence, which best indicates effective nitroglycerin therapy in a client admitted with an MI awaiting transport to the cath lab? So effective, it'd be something we would want. So as I'm looking at these, increased troponin levels. Okay, well, I don't think I'd want increased troponin levels in a client with an MI. Increased blood pressure. Well, if it's effective, I know that nitroglycerin, that is a nitro, is a vasodilator, so it's going to take the blood pressure down. Decreased chest pain. Okay, that would mean therapy is effective because also that would mean, especially with someone with an MI, that makes perfect sense. And decreased headache. Well, nitro can cause a nitroglycerin headache, and so that wouldn't necessarily mean that it's effective. So I'm going to pick decreased chest pain. And again, what I love is it shows you why it's right, why it's wrong, so that way you can understand your mistakes, or even sometimes if you guess right, why it was correct and give you that further affirmation. So that way you can remember it for next time. And so what I love about the simple nursing page, that it's not just about practicing questions, but it's truly about understanding those concepts and improving your test taking skills. There's unlimited quizzes that you can make. You can also track your progress like you can see here and review previous quizzes taken. There's the study guide PDFs, so especially if you're someone who likes to print things out for those quick tips to remember. And then those video lessons have those memory tricks, those mnemonics that we all love that help things to stick with us and help it to be easier to recall an exam. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one. Make sure to check out the question bank in your Simple Nursing membership, especially if you're serious about getting better in NCLEX questions and about your exam performances while in nursing school. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tips and tutorials. And we also, if you're a member, we have those weekly webinars where we do live question breakdown for NCLEX prep and for nursing school support. Stick with us and we will stick with the facts that the facts stick with you. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides? packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos. Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.